Hi, I'm Jeff Coffey, co-author of FileMaker Pro 10, The Missing Manual. And in this screencast, I'm going to show you how to build graphically rich layouts in FileMaker Pro 10. To start off with, we're going to talk a little about preparing your graphics for use in FileMaker Pro, how you can build them in the graphics program of your choice and get them ready to be used in FileMaker with the best efficiency and quality. Then I'm going to show you how to insert those graphics onto your layout in a way that ensures compatibility, and then how to work with those embedded graphics inside FileMaker itself. Here we have a simple FileMaker database. This is the same database we created in the first half of the book, FileMaker Pro 10, The Missing Manual. It's a basic database that holds information about people. And this layout that we're seeing here is the kind of layout that FileMaker creates for you when you first create your database. It gives me basic text fields with black text, bold labels, no field borders, but it is a functioning layout. I can click in these fields, I can make my changes, and so forth. So my goal now is to decorate this layout, to make it look nice, to arrange the data in a way that makes the most sense to me and to my users. I'm going to give you a peek at, at one possible finished layout that you might create. We're going to switch to the people finished layout here. And so here is the same information, but it's been arranged in a way that's more graphically pleasing. And if you compare this to the layout we create in the book, you'll notice that this is a little more graphically rich. I have these rounded edges and these gradients and shadow effects and beveled edges and things like this. These are the kinds of effects that you can create in your graphics program of choice, but you can't create natively in FileMaker Pro itself. And so that's my goal, to take these graphics rich elements from other programs and bring them into FileMaker and use them as part of my layout process. Now the first thing we worry about when we're doing something like this, after you've done your basic design, and I'll leave that up to you as far as how you want it to look, but is how to get those graphics created and ready to use in FileMaker. FileMaker, it turns out, can handle many different graphic formats, and you can paste them in or you can import them, uh, but there are a few things that you should keep in mind. I have this folder full of images right here, which are some images I've created for use on my layout. I'm going to open this up and we'll take a look at what's there. And what I'm using is the PNG graphics format, Portable Network Graphics. And that format is a great choice for FileMaker use because it's, it's a rich format. It supports full color depth. It supports transparency and all of these fancy things that we want in our graphics work. Uh, but it's also very compact, so the file size is small. And we're actually going to take these graphics and embed them into the FileMaker database. So size becomes important, especially when your users are uh, accessing the database from a slower connection, say over the internet or something like that. Every file that you put in there, every graphic, has to get downloaded to their computer. And if we can keep those file sizes as small as possible, we can make that experience less troublesome for our users. Uh, also, as I said, PNG supports transparency. So if you want to do things with your graphics that have, for instance, edges that bleed into other things and things like that, uh, we're not going to get into how to create those in your own graphics program. I'll leave that up to you. But the point is, if you use the PNG format, you can save those graphics out with that transparency intact. And then when you bring it into FileMaker, it'll come through looking good. So now I have my images here. And they're on my hard drive. I created them in Photoshop, and I saved them here. I'm going to go into my layout, switch to layout mode. And my first task is to get the graphics into FileMaker itself. Now a lot of people, their first attempt at doing this, you just go to your graphics program, copy the object, and paste it into FileMaker. And that will work, but there are a lot of challenges with doing it that way. First of all, when you paste, you don't have much control over the format that is used. So you might end up, for instance, on a Mac with a picked format graphic, which is, is not nearly as efficient space-wise as PNG. And also you might lose your transparency. In fact, it's very hard to get things like transparency and, and the exact settings that you want when you're doing a copy-paste operation. So instead, what you should do is save the graphics on your hard drive like this. Individual files, and preferably the PNG format, exactly the way you want them. And then when you're in layout mode, you can just go here to Insert, Picture, and then you can choose the graphic that you want to bring in. I'll start, for instance, with this header background.png and push Open. So you see here I have this graphic. Now this is another thing that you can bear in mind as you create your graphics. Again, we're going for the best size possible so that we have the best performance in our database. So this graphic is actually the header that shows across the top of the layout, and I'll show you that here. You can see it's this dark black and light gray uh, background image. Now, my copy of this graphic 
is very small. You see it's just maybe a quarter of an inch wide. And that's because this graphic is exactly the same across all the way from the left to the right. If you, if you look at it closely, you'll see that it changes from top to bottom, but it doesn't change from left to right. So in FileMaker, I can bring in a very small picture like this, and then using standard FileMaker techniques, I can just stretch and resize that graphic, and it maintains its integrity. It still looks great. I don't lose any resolution or anything like that. So this graphic, because it's identical across that entire width, is something that I can stretch to whatever size I want. And that's important because I don't have to store all the pixels for a great big graphic. I can make a smaller graphic and stretch it out. I'm going to go ahead and snap this graphic into place. And I'll make it a little wider. And now we have a header. Now another thing to bear in mind is that, of course, in most databases, you have more than one layout that you're working with. And I can take this graphic right here, and I can use it in other layouts. Once I've got the graphic in FileMaker Pro, like this, then it's perfectly OK to use copy and paste. I could copy that graphic, switch to another layout, paste it in, and now I have a second copy of the graphic. And that's actually a good way to do it, because that makes sure that FileMaker stores only one copy of the original graphic in the database. Every time I paste it, FileMaker just pastes another reference to that same stored copy of the graphic, which means that my database stays nice and small. And because it's all within FileMaker, it maintains my transparencies and my formats and things like that. So once you're in there, feel free to copy and paste. Now, once I've added this graphic to the layout, I can use all the FileMaker tools that I would typically use. For instance, I'll take the text tool, and I'll make a text label that says Details. And maybe I'll put that right there. And I'll set its text color to white, let's say. And so I can sort of layer FileMaker objects and graphical objects to my heart's content. I'm going to go ahead and insert the next graphic, which is this tab.png. This represents a highlighted or selected tab in my particular graphical mode of operation. I'm going to open that. And this little tab is designed to sit right on top of this right here. And this is another kind of important point about working with graphics in FileMaker. I certainly could have just created a large graphic with this tab in place and the background and everything. And if I had three or four tabs, I could, in my graphics program, put three or four different copies of that tab object on there and save the whole thing out as one big graphic. But there's a couple of reasons why I don't want to do that. One is, again, my file size gets bigger. I'm storing a big graphic instead of a little graphic. And two, it's a lot easier in FileMaker to work with individual objects than one large picture. So for instance, I have one tab there. If I wanted to add a second one, I can just option drag or alt drag and, and get a second copy of that graphic object. And, and I can work with both of those independently. And that's, that's nice. That makes it faster and easier for me as a developer. So you, usually your graphics programs have tools that will let you slice up your designs into individual little graphic files that you can bring in. You get the best in terms of size and the best in terms of flexibility. So I'll go ahead and slide this into place. And I'll just send it backward a little bit. So my text appears in front of it. Center that on there. Now all of my standard FileMaker tools apply here. Again, I can select these guys and I can align their centers just like that. Or whatever, you can use all of the techniques that you know and love. Now the last graphic object that I have in my design is that beveled box. I'm going to insert that now. Insert picture and choose box.png. And this is just a little box I can use to sort of call out some content. I think in my original layout I had some sort of record detail information in there. And one thing that I want to point out about a thing like this is this box is not the same top to bottom or left to right. You see it has these curved edges, which means there's some variation. So if I took this box right here, and let's just make a copy of it for comparison's sake, and I were to, for instance, shrink it down, you see that my corners, they got a little different there. I don't know if you can see that well, but they're sort of squished. And likewise, if I needed a wider version of this box, so I stretched it out, those corners would get stretched out. And I begin to see some resolution degradation, some problems with my graphic that I don't want to have happen. So this is a pretty common problem if you have a graphic that's more complex like this one. Uh, and there are really two schools of thought on how to deal with this, and it, and it really is up to you. 
One possibility is that if I need a different size, I can just return to my graphics program and make this graphic in a smaller or larger size. You know, start with the original and, and shrink or resize, depending on what my tools let me do. Uh, make it look real nice, and then save out another PNG copy and bring it back in. So my database has an individual copy at each size. And if I don't have bunches and bunches of those, that's fine. And, and a lot of people find that easier because they know already how to work with their graphics program and, and make that happen. Uh, there is another way that I can accomplish that. Suppose I wanted to make this box resizable width-wise. What I can do instead is I'll just delete that and I can cut my graphic up into parts. So I'll insert picture again and here I have a box parts folder and I have box 1, 2, and 3. So I'll insert box 1 and you see that that's just the left side of my box. I'll insert box 2 and that's sort of the middle of my box and then I'll insert box 3 and that'll be the right side of my box. And if I line these up just right, and that takes a little doing sometimes, use my arrow keys to nudge those in place, like such, almost there. There we go. Now I have what essentially behaves like a box. I can even group this and move it around. But if I ever need to resize, I can take these end caps, we usually call them, move that off to the side, and then stretch that center part, because I've made the center part consistent from left to right, and stretch that out snap it right there and now I have a wider box that maintains the integrity. So by slicing my objects up into sometimes three or nine different pieces depending on your needs you can make it so that you can actually work with those objects and resize them in FileMaker without losing quality. That also allows you to have one set of the graphics instead of multiple different copies of different sizes. But it is a little more tedious sometimes to work with it that way so it's really up to you how you choose to do that. I'm going to finish sliding these graphical objects into place and then we'll take a look at the finished product. Okay, I've finished arranging the objects on my layout. And you can see that they're all nicely organized and pretty much match what we had before. I've even added some text objects here which I'll use to create buttons later on in my own work uh, to switch between different layouts and things like that. So let's go ahead and save this layout, switch to browse mode and see how it looks. And you see that my layout looks pretty nice. You'll also notice I added a gray background here, which is just a regular FileMaker rectangle object with a gray fill, and a few lines right here uh, to set apart my different fields. So here I have a nice graphical uh, layout. Uh, one thing that we do want to do, though, is talk about auto resize. As I'm sure you know, we can configure our FileMaker layout so they'll grow and shrink as our window grows, and I haven't done that yet. And the important thing to note is that that works just fine with graphical objects, with the same caveats we talked about before. I'm going to switch to layout mode. And that is that, for instance, if I were to set this box object to stretch, then as I moved and resized my layout, uh, the corners of that box would begin to get out of shape and things like that. So if you want resizing of complex graphics like that, you're going to have to do that slicing technique and make sure that only the slices that are supposed to stretch do stretch. I don't have that problem here, though, because I'll just take this box and all of its content and just anchor it on the right-hand side and let it move right over. Uh, likewise, I can take this stretchable graphic up here, this header graphic, and anchor it on the both the left and the right, and it'll go ahead and stretch, which will look just fine for that object. I'll take my people text, anchor it on the right so it moves, and then I'll take some of my fields, like my notes field, email address, city, street address, phone number, last name, and first name, and anchor those so that they stretch. My state and zip code fields should anchor on the right but not the left so that they move out of the way of that city field as it comes cruising over and my notes field can go ahead and get tall I'll let it take up sort of the bottom space I see here that this isn't quite wide enough as well so we'll fix that now now the last thing I have is these little line objects they're very hard to see so I'm gonna click right here just to center myself and then zoom in so you can see them a little better and you see here are all these little lines and what I want to do is select these lines one by one. I can do that meticulously or I can hold down the Apple or Shift key and just drag straight up until I've touched all of them. And if we zoom back out, we'll see that they're all selected. And those need to stretch as well. So we'll leave them anchored on the left and also anchor them on the right. Now usually when I do this, I make a few mistakes, so we'll see how it turned out. I'm going to switch back to browse mode. And now we have what looks like a pretty decent layout. I did forget one thing, which is my gray object here needs to stretch top to bottom. And also, I would say that this is a little too close to the edge now. Both of those are quite easy to fix. I'll take this and just slide it over a notch. 
select my gray object, anchor it on the bottom, save, and switch to browse mode. And there we have a nice looking, stretchy, graphically rich layout built in FileMaker Pro. I hope this screencast has helped you learn how to take your graphical skills and apply them to your database skills to make your databases look a little sharper.